spooky scary time of year gotta talk about something spooky scary i didn't actually finish writing that part of the song um hi how's how are you good it's spooky Ooh, spooky yeah we're gonna talk about the first horror game well the first horror game that i can remember uh that i ever played splatterhouse 2 and you know um for a game with a largely simple execution, it's still, to this day, pretty freaky. And to many of you, you may look at this and say it's nothing compared to a lot of the massive gore factor games we got going on these days, and I, I acknowledge this, but look, 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 everyone gives Mortal Kombat credit for, you know, its gore, which largely was just blood and the fatalities, which was pretty, pretty dark for the time. But Splatterhouse is, was one of the earliest games that really took this into, um, you know, into a horror setting. And, you know, really, you know, tried to produce a, something that would actually kind of freak the player out. You know, just a little bit. And, you know, they couldn't go with necessarily, you know, actual scares. It was a little harder to do that with 16 bits. But what they could do was create some of the most nightmarish imagery in a game up until that point, and lordy, 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 did they ever succeed? Uh, made by Namco, and just, yeah, so the plot of this game, you play as a character named Rick, and, and this takes place out of the first Splatterhouse. So, so, so Rick, 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 Rick got stuck in like this mansion with this evil scientist dude who was creating all sorts of demonic abominations, and the whole situation's really messed up. Anyway, uh, his girlfriend Jennifer got taken from him, but Rick finds the terror mask that gives him unspeakable powers at great cost to his own, uh, you know, psychological stability. And what happens is you don't actually rescue Jennifer at the beginning, at the end of the uh, other Splatterhouse. And so in the beginning of this one, Rick is tormented by this loss, but the mask reappears and says like, hey man. Just put me back on and we can go save her. And Rick's like, yeah, but every time I put you on, horrible crap happens. And the mask is like, no, it's cool. I promise. I'm legit. <laughs> did, did I just hear you laugh? N no. Just, just put me on, man. We, we got this. Anyway, so you take control of Rick as he's walking from left to right. And to call it a platformer... It wouldn't be wrong, but it's not really right. You do jump occasionally, but that's not really what the game is about. It's mostly about stopping the hordes of unspeakable terrors that are just marching towards you, trying to stop you from saving Jennifer, and fighting horrific, grotesque bosses. At the same time, the gore factor and visual presentation of this game is amped up to an unspeakable degree. At the point in my life when I first played this, I wasn't really used to gore. I, I hadn't actually played any gory games up until that point. I, I might have played Mortal Kombat in the arcades, but that was about it. This was on an entirely different level, and as a kid, it's a little disturbing to see the kind of just grotesque madness on display here. And honestly, it's not just the gore. Because as I played it again, I realized there there are other horror elements here that aren't being taken into account. I mean, for one thing, the monster designs are distinctive and freaky. Like, it's hard to tell what things are, are. like, you can see that there are these things that are moving, but they're just gross mutants that don't even make any sense, and it's the way they move and the animations are just creepy. What also helped was setting the stage that this place is an absolute, absolute hell pit. To the point that the monsters themselves aren't just out to get you. They're out to get each other. There are plenty of times where monsters will kill one another. And to me, that actually sets the bar a lot higher in terms of fear factor when you're taking that into account. You, you can clearly see through no words at all that this place is messed up and you need to watch yourself. It doesn't help. That the bosses are all just, 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 look, what, what is that? I don't even know what that is. It, it just, it's a thing and it exists and it's trying to kill me, but, ugh. Also, the music is 
alarmingly creepy, but I mean, I would have expected as much. And overall, if you're into this kind of dark, like, gory, just twisted mess that you're looking at, like if you see this and you think you might have some fun with it, it's definitely a good game to pl play if you're a horror fan. I will say that from a control perspective, it was never very good in that department, and it definitely hasn't aged well. Rick controls in a very stiff manner, so it can be a little difficult to get used to. Like I said, it's not a true platformer in the sense that, yeah, you can jump over stuff, and you have to sometimes, but it doesn't feel as fluid as, say, Mario or Sonic. But that's not really the point of the game. The point of the game is to be freaked out by what you're seeing. Anyway, do you want to talk about the uh, hanging baby fetuses that are somehow psychic? Oh, oh, you don't? Okay, good, neither do I. So anyway, that's Splatterhouse 2. Really good game, classic horror, horror experience, definitely worth a try if you haven't had the pleasure, I use the term lightly, of experiencing it yourself. That being said, if you're not a fan of gore, I... I would say, no, the, the, the opposite, go play Mario or something, anything else really, because, no, we're out. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.